tender feet. I'm in the new world.
back up to 110, heaven's future. Amen. Amen. To me, I've 
song. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for your presence. Already it's been really good to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you, Lord. I just appreciate your blessings and all that you've already done. Speak to my heart. and Thank you, God, for those that could come tonight. Pray you'd be with those that are here. Bless them real good. And the ones that couldn't come, bless them as well. And have your hand upon the ones that has no desire. And we'll thank you for it. God, have your blessed way in uh, the service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm as nervous, uh, you've heard said, as a uh, cat in a room full of rock, or a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, amen. <laughs> amen, I hope I never get over it. I hope I never get over uh, the, the excitement there is about being a Christian and being saved and on the way to heaven. Uh, tonight, as we have studied in this evening, got ready. Brother John's give me time. He told me this morning, and I studied most all evening, and I thought I had her down pat, amen. You know how that goes. And I walked back into the uh, uh, living room about 6, oh, about 5.30 or, or 10 till or 20, whatever it was. And I had it, I thought together. I sat down, and uh, the Holy Spirit said, that ain't it. Amen. Go back again. Amen. And so, scared me to death. I always, I'm always, i excited when the Lord does something like that. On one side, it makes me nervous. But on the other side, it makes me excited because I feel like He's got something in mind that He wants to accomplish. Amen. So, I went back in and read for a little bit longer. Prayed again. And I felt like the Lord to have us to look this way tonight. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Chapter number 7. Amen. Chapter number 7 in the book of Deuteronomy. Verse number 7, start reading. Let's back up to verse number 6. The Bible said, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Boy, that ought to make us shout. Amen. Thanking the God that He chose us to save us and uh, give us a home in heaven uh, to be a special people unto Himself above all the people that are upon the earth. The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were of more number than any people. For ye were not, for ye were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you. And, uh, uh, which he hath sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy to them that love him uh, uh, and keep his commandments to, the, to a thousand generations. Amen. Thank God for His goodness and His love. I thought about the love of God tonight. And, uh, you know, back when I was under conviction and I was, uh, God is dealing with my heart, you know, I, I had a fear of hell. I didn't want to go to that awful place. I remember as a young boy, Mama was talking about how hot it was, was out burning leaves, and there was just a fear come on me. I uh, didn't, didn't want to go to that awful place. But, you know, as I, as I remember in uh, Repentance in 1977, uh, that really wasn't what uh, brought me down, amen? That wasn't what caused me to want to be saved uh, the most. Of what made me want to be saved was because He loved me. Yes, sir. Amen. I remember in prayer, I said, God, I've done everything wrong. I don't deserve your mercy or your kindness, but I thank you that you love me. And I, he brought me to repentance. You know, the Bible talks about that. It said it's the goodness of God that leadeth us to repentance. And boy, that's what got a hold of my heart. And I thought about tonight uh, trying to preach on our faithful God. He's faithful, amen. 
Now over in the book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21, he t- tells us that He gave us an example after He had suffered that we might follow after Him. And so God is faithful, and He expects you and I to be faithful. We know the Bible talks about in Corinthians uh, 4 2, it's required of stewards to be found faithful. And that's one thing that God expects you and I, you know, we can all be faithful. Amen. Uh, I feel kind of strange uh, uh, preaching on being faithful when I hadn't been here uh, every service in the last month. And so Carlene said this morning on the way, she said, you know, it's been a month since I've been in church. Amen. And I said, yeah, I know it's been a good little while. Amen. But I didn't miss uh, that much. I did get to come sometimes when she was able uh, to stay by herself or, or I was able to come. But uh, thank the Lord I learned about being a husband. Amen. The Bible said when we get married, uh, until death do us part. Amen. And so it's our responsibility to take care of each other. Amen. And take care of her. You know, I told Brother Johns I'd learned more about cooking breakfast here in the last month or so than I ever have. And he said, I want a fellowship with you. He said, I, he said, I like somebody uh, that has cooked breakfast. He said, I have been, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> but thank God for that, amen. And uh, it's because the Lord loves us uh, that He brought us to where we were in salvation. We see in the, in the Scripture very plainly, it wasn't because any special things that we had, any special ability, you know, whenever I first was saved in 1977, I thought, well, maybe it was because, uh, you know, I was a hard worker that God come to where I was. You know, and I found out real quick that wasn't it. Amen. And I kept looking for all these fun things in my life that might have caused God to come to where I was and save me, Brother Dahl. But I found out it wasn't nothing. It was just because He loved me. Amen. I didn't have any abilities. Amen. I was just worthless and hopeless and helpless. And then God came to where I was. Whew. Amen. And He saved me out of that horrible mess that I had come to. I remember, and I don't know where there may be somebody tonight here uh, that's never put their faith and trust in Him, but I was 21 years old, and uh, uh, I had a, or I got saved when I was 27, but around about 21, uh, God had let me get a lot of things that I thought would really make me happy. I thought, boy, if I had a, a camper in a lot over on Groover's Marina, I'd really be happy. And I got one of them over there by Harold Harrison, the bank president there in Ackworth, amen. And I found out there really wasn't no happiness in that in that camper. And then I got to think, boy, well, if I had me a really nice boat, amen, that'd just be the cat's meow, and I'd really be happy. I got me a, a, a 21 model glass Tron, amen, with a 115 Evan Rule. That was a big motor back then, amen. Run 51 mile an hour, amen. I mean, it was scoot. And I thought, boy, that's going to really make me happy. But I had that thing for a year or two, and it really didn't have any happiness in it. And so God allowed me to get all these things that I thought would make me happy. And then He showed me that uh, that I was never going to be happy outside of Him. Amen. And so thank God He saved me by His marvelous grace. And I jumped those things that I had in the world best I could. You know, they keep they slip out and haunt me once in a while and try to get my attention. <laughs> Come on now, try to get my attention, get my mind off of Him. But I I found out if we'll put Him first, He'll put us first. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for His love. And I thought about how faithful He is. He's faithful to love us. I don't know who you are in the building tonight that may have doubts about that. But God loves you. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been or what you've done, God loves you. Amen. And He wants to save you by His marvelous grace. If you're not saved, amen, the Bible tells in the book of Peter 3.9 that it's not His will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So God is faithful to love us. Amen. And then I wrote down, God's faithful... Uh, to redeem us, or God's faithful to, let me back up in order, God's faithful to creation. Every time I go out in the springtime and I see those little daffodils and jonquils and stuff, 
I think about that. God gives those flowers ability to grow. And the sunshine to, to bring them. You know, God created everything. The Bible tells Psalm 119 that the heavens declare the glory of God. In His firm up showeth His handiwork day and day that utter His speech. There's no voice or language where he, where he's not, voice is not known. So God is faithful to creation. Amen. You can't, you can't look around and not see the faithfulness of God. So God is faithful. He, stu- he uh, stepped out on nothing and he, he made everything. Amen. He's faithful to His creation. He created all things. Amen. And I, as we look at the stars, we look at the sun and the moon, we can see that we have a faithful God. Amen. Amen. We think about the waters of the sea, how God stood on that and He told the waters, He said, now you can come to right here, but that's as far as you can go. Amen. Over Death Valley, we know that the sea level is way, way beyond a lot of the sea levels. Amen. But the seas stay where they are and where they're put because God's faithful to keep them there. Amen. He's faithful to creation. Everything He created, He made. The Bible said He satisfied uh, the uh, longing of every uh, longing soul. Amen. He's faithful to His creation. And then He's faithful to His Word. Amen. Whenever uh, I was first saved, uh, God had gave me a scripture on my heart of Isaiah 55, 11, where His Word won't return void. And uh, as uh, God showed me that, He saved me, and He let me realize that it was the Word of God that had done a, a job in my heart. First time I ever got up to teach Sunday school or do anything for the Lord, I used that verse. And uh, I stood up uh, down at, Ma- at Mount Zion Baptist Church, and I read that Scripture, and I cried for 30 minutes. Amen. Amen. Whenever I got through, the preacher come to me. He said, oh, I'm so glad you come today. Boy, you really helped the church. I thought, you're crazy. I didn't do nothing but sit up there and bawl like a baby. Amen. <laughs> but I realized that His Word would not come return void. Amen. And it done a job in my heart. Amen. It got way down deep. Whenever I was a little boy there in Sunday school, and Mama would make me listen to the preacher, and that song we sang for, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen. It got way down deep, amen, in this old heart of mine. And it finally sprung forth like those little flowers I was talking about in salvation. He's faithful to creation. He's faithful to His Word. Whenever God says it, that settles it in His Word, whether you believe it or not. Whether I believe it or not. I mean, whenever God said it, that's the way it is. Amen. The Bible tells us that in Psalms 119, 189, or 89, He said, Thy Word is forever settled in heaven. Thank God He is faithful to His Word. And whenever He gives His Word on, uh, on something, you can bank on it. Let me get one illustration. I'll move on to the next point. Uh, I was uh, in Bible college, and I've used this before and told this, and you probably remember, uh, but I was uh, studying and uh, trying to get my temper under control and those, some of those bad habits out, amen, of uh, flying off the temper, uh, t- uh, flying off the handle and getting mad, amen. And God gave me a verse there in Psalms one fifty or Psalms fifteen that a soft answer turneth away wrath. Right. Amen. Put that on my heart. Amen. I was thinking about it, uh, and it was right before Christmas time. I believe it was nineteen seventy eight, and I was going up Bell's Ferry Highway, fixing to make a right turn on Highway ninety two. Some of you probably know where that is, and uh, there was a truck come up behind me and started to go around on the right hand side. And uh, I had my blinker on, uh, but he co- tried to go around the right-hand side. I didn't see him coming, and so I cut over in front of him and liked to hit him. He slid up to a stop, and boy, he jumped out of the, of the truck, and he come toward the truck, and his face was as red as the bull, amen, stomping and appalling, amen. And I thought in my life, I said, whenever he gets here, I've got a jack handle between my legs here. I'm going to stop some of that, amen. So what I thought, brother, I'd just being honest, amen. But God put that back in my heart. A soft answer turns away wrath. Yeah. And as he jerked open my door, and boy, he looked at me like he was fixing to eat me up. 
And I said to him, God, God give me the grace to do it. I said, sir, I wouldn't have hit you for nothing. I said, I had my blinker on, and I had to swing out to the right to make that turn, and I'm so sorry that I, that I scared you. And when I said that to him, it looked like you took a ball-peen hammer and hit a little bulldog right between the eyes. He began to shake and shudder. And he acted like he was afraid that when he closed my door, he was going to make the hinges squeak. Amen. And he pushed the door back to real easy, Brother Al. Walked back around the truck, got in his truck, got in his vehicle, and started to leave. Went across the street to the bank. I made the right turn, and I glanced back whenever I made that right-hand turn, and I seen him standing there by the, uh, by the bank window, and he's shaking his head. Amen. And I said, boy, it worked. Amen. It really worked. Amen. I was so excited that the Word of God really worked. Amen. Amen. And it will work for you. It'll work for me if we'll put it to shoe leather. So God's faithful to His Word. When He gives you His Word on it, you can go ahead and take it to the bank. So many illustrations that I could use tonight about Him being faithful to His Word. Whenever He saves you, then He's faithful to keep you. He's faithful to His Word. And then I thought about the third thing I wrote down. He's faithful to save sinners. The Bible tells us He's not willing that any should perish. They've already quoted, but he's, He wants everybody to repent and be saved. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, God desires you to be saved. Amen. Just as much as anybody up at the jail or anybody else, God wants you to be saved. He's faithful to save sinners. The Bible tells us He came to seek and to save that which was lost. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, that you put your name right there, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is faithful to save sinners. When we go and visit and go tell folk about the Lord, uh, we don't have to take uh, uh, ask what nationality they are, or what color they are, or what creed they are. Because he loves everybody the same. Amen. Robbie called me last week. He was so excited. He said, Dad, I had a, a couple saved uh, last week and said they're going to get baptized Sunday. And I said, well, wonderful. Tell me about it. He said, well, they called me and asked me to come over there and have dinner with them. And I said, okay. So Sharon and I went over and had dinner with them. He said, we were sitting there at the table, just had got through eating, didn't hardly have time <coughs> to wipe her mouth. And the husband said to me, he said, Now what is this stuff you're talking about? Every Sunday when you uh, end the service, you say, Are you 100% sure that if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven? He said, I want to know how to do that. Amen. And God led them both to the Lord there. Amen. And they both were saved, thank God, by the Amen. Word of God. And you can know, I can know by the Word of God that we are saved. Yes. Amen. But so many times we forget to be faithful uh, to give out His Word. But God is faithful to save sinners. There's nobody He doesn't want to save. He's, he's faithful to save sinners. Amen. And then going on down, I'm glad he doesn't, when he, whenever He saves us, He doesn't just throw us out and say, make it best you can. Amen. He gives us an opportunity to live and to do the things that we should do. And uh, He's faithful to forgive sin. Amen. You know, I, I've come short this week. I, I've not done everything perfect. Can't do everything perfect. But I'm glad I've got an advocate with a father. Amen. Amen. As I can go tell him about it. I can go ask him. And he's faithful to forgive yeah. sin. The Bible tells us in Psalm 103, uh, verse 12, He healeth all of our iniquities. Uh, he, for, he forgiveth all of our sin, iniquities and He healeth all of our diseases. I'm glad He's faithful to forgive sin. I experienced that not very long after I say I had a situation come up and I missed the mark and more condemnation come on my heart. I went home that evening and I was kneeling by the bed praying and I felt like the, 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 the sea was rolling on, my, on the inside. I felt like I was as lost as a hank. Amen. They're praying. Amen. And I said, God, I'm so sorry. I missed it. And I done wrong. And I wish you'd forgive me and cleanse me. And you know what happened, Brother Johnson? He just settled the sea right down. Yep. 
Amen. He forgave my sin. I got up in the bed. I laid my head on the pillow. Boy, I was just as peaceful as I could be. I found out that God is faithful to forgive sin. And whenever we come to Him with an honest heart and uh, we ask Him to forgive us, He's faithful. He'll forgive us. Amen. Whenever we come short and we acknowledge that, thank God in His greatness and His goodness, uh, He'll He'll forgive our sin. And uh, He's faithful. Then I wrote down, and fifth thing, uh, to keep His promises. There's not one that He doesn't keep. He tells us we can do all things through Christ. It strengthens us. And uh, God shall supply all of our need according to riches and glory. What about Romans 8, 28? The Bible said all things work together for good of them that love God and those that are called according to His purpose. Now sometimes we strain at that one. Amen. We have a situation in our life that we think, how in the world? How in the world could this be good? Amen. But I promise it is because God can't lie. And He put it in the book. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. To keep His promises. Amen. Thank God for that. God is faithful. He cannot lie. I wrote down the sixth thing, and I sure am glad of this. Amen. He's faithful to keep us from being overcome by evil. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us we know that uh, we know the Scripture tells us in First Corinthians ten thirteen. There's no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful to give you a way of escape if you, that you might be able to bear it. Back some years ago, I had a friend of mine, Brother Lee Moore, he pastored up on, up on Lookout Mountain, went by there this week, and uh, he had been at a church over Ebenezer, Baptist Church in Canton, and uh, he uh, had to leave there for whatever reason. He moved and brought his children to the house and lived with us about a year before they called him up there at that church. And uh, God, I was, I was wrestling with this situation, didn't know what to do. And I said, Lord, and you know, it's kind of kind of bold, I guess, Brother Perry, but I said, God, I don't see how nobody could de- deal with this. And I said, I don't, I don't see how I can put up with it. Amen. And God put on my heart Brother Lee Moore's face, and he showed me what he went through. He gave me the verse, 1 Peter chapter number 5. He said, Your brethren which are in the world, have accomplished these same afflictions. Amen. God is faithful to give you a way of escape. And you know, it gave me courage, and I thought about, well, if the Lord could help Brother Lee through that situation, He could help me too. Amen. And God new courage and new faith and went on another mile. Amen. God is faithful to give us what we need to keep us from being overcome. Amen. I'm so glad He's faithful He's there uh, this morning. They sang that song about being the lily of the valley. And Brother David explained some of that. That the valley grows down in the valley. The the lily grows down in the valley. Amen. And I'm glad whenever you get to your lowest point and you're struggling and going through problems, just look around. The Lord will be standing there. Amen. Amen. He'll help you whenever you get to your lowest. He'll help you. Hmm. Whenever you get to the end of your rope, amen. You've heard it said, when you get to the end of the rope, just tie a knot and hang on, amen. Amen. Uh, I'll, uh, God will help you. I've shared this before. I think it'll fit right, real good right here. The fellow fell off of the edge of a cliff, and he was uh, hanging there by a root. And uh, he, he said, oh, help me, help me, help me. Somebody help me. And he heard a voice up over the cliff, and he said, well, just turn loose. And I'll help you. And he waited just a second or two and he said, Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> but I promise you, <laughs> according to his word, he'll help you. Amen. He's faithful to help you. Whenever you come to the end of your rope, whenever you get to your wit's end, as a preacher preached not very long ago, thank God you can depend on Jesus and he'll help you. He's faithful. And then He's faithful to keep us from being overcome. And uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, the Bible tells us, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abandoning the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our, God, our faithful God, 
Amen. He gave us an example, as a word quoted over in Peter, uh, that gives us an example to follow after his suffering. And God is faithful, and He expects you and I to be faithful. Amen. Amen. And God will help us with any situation we face after He saves us. He doesn't love you. But he doesn't love you because you're great or because you're mighty or because you're a lot smarter than anybody else. He just loves you. Amen. He just loves you, and He loves me. Thank God, our faithful God. I sure am glad that He doesn't change His mind, preacher. Yep. Amen. And we get Him, we get Him more out. And He said, "Hell, I've had enough. I, I'm, you know, this is it with you, buddy." I'm glad He doesn't do that. I'm glad He's faithful. I'm glad He's merciful. Yes, Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight, Lord, for this uh, thought. I thank you, God, the fact that you do love us, and Lord, how faithful you are. Lord, you've never left us. You've never, Lord, forsaken us. You've always been right there. Whatever we've needed over the years, God, you've always been there. And Lord, we know that you'll continue to be there. You're a faithful creator. You're a faithful God. And we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for first loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.